So the ice went off not too long ago. The big lakes probably two days ago and right now we hoofed it back into a little lake and right now as far as finding fish that are cooperating and willing to bite you really have to find that warm water. This lake has been ice free for a lot longer than some of the other bigger lakes that tend to hold ice much longer. So as far as finding fish that are willing to cooperate water temperature is a huge deal. You have to find that warm water and so therefore I'm not going to go fish on the lakes that just recently were ice out. And I don't know if you can see behind me but the main lake back here is back behind these trees and we're sitting in a little pocket. It's real dark water, the bottom's really black so this is going to absorb a lot of heat and this is going to warm much faster. Now I don't have a thermometer but this is just pretty common practice that these little bodies of water, these little north bays, they just warm a lot quicker and the fish are going to be a lot more active and along with that so are the bugs and I believe that that's why the fish use these areas. The water warms quicker. I mean they're probably just like you and I. I'd much rather swim around in warm water than I would cold water. So as far as temperature goes of water and food, this is the place that first comes alive. You see these trees back here and stumps and everything. There's some cattails. There's just a lot of diverse habitat in here and that gives off a lot of heat as well and cover. A lot of us at Wired to Fish like to get a little bit adventurous and that entails maybe having to break through some brush occasionally and to keep my rod from breaking and my line from losing its integrity, you know, the, the rod gloves, these little rod slicks are definitely nice for doing that. They keep your line from getting beat up, your eyes from getting bent and etc. So we use those along with a backpack. I like to go simple, lightweight and just hoof it back I'm not dragging anything and I'm able to carry a lot of stuff you know if you take a look at this I have an assortment of things I have some bobbers some camera gear a small tackle box this allows me to jump from lake to lake and just be really mobile so I'm just gonna start flipping real close to the shore before I adventure out any further I'm gonna start close and then work my way out because I don't want to catch a fish way out immediately and drag it through potentially a whole school of fish and spook everything out of here. So I'm just going to ease in here real tight to the bank, see if there's any fish hanging out around these sticks and stumps and lay downs. There we go. All right, got one. Look at that. Right away. This looks like a bass. It is. I got a largemouth. Ha! I got a little large mouth. <laughs> How about that? First fish. Just a little bucket. Little male bass thinking about eating a bug. I'm gonna let him go. See if I can't catch a bluegill or something. That's another bass. Oh, get out of those sticks. <laughs> kind of like a little longer rod to get them, get them up. Get them up on the surface and get them back to me. And you can see I'm using braid. I have about an eight pound braid to a six pound floral leader. This is what my main, what my bobber and everything is sliding on. If I was in clean open water, yeah, I'd probably finesse it up a little bit, but uh, there's just so much wood in here and everything, and with a little longer rod, I can get them up toward the surface and put a little heat to them as far as getting them out of the cover. Otherwise, even a fish like that doesn't take much to get me wound into those sticks. And then I'm breaking off lures and bobbers, and I just... I want to try to avoid that. So I've gone a little bit heavier on my on my setup as far as line and rod. This is a medium light, but it's almost seven foot. So I can lift, get fish up to the surface quickly. There you go. That is the right flavor. That's a bluegill. Oh, look at him right into the wood. 
You can't stop them. They just go where they want. Come here. Not a bad little bluegill. Not a huge one by any means, but the right flavor. There you go, got that one. Look at it, he's gonna get me around that tree. Oh, he's stuck in the tree. Oh gosh, I got him. <sighs> he's, he took a hard left and got me around that tree. Managed to slide him up over it, but pretty. Pretty purples and orange in there. Iridescent. This is a little bamf plastic on a dug, little dug hook with a, has that little uppercut hook. I've used this a lot in the winter, fishing through the ice for bluegills and crappie. You get it in them, they, they're just stuck. The little design of that hook is really hard, really hard for them to actually shake it. There you go. Oh, I'm stuck in the tree. Got him. Which way is he gonna go? He is stuck right in the roof of his roof of his beak. I can't get trying to get him to go one way and he wants to go the other. It's a challenge getting him out of here. That's for sure. Uh, hook is buried right through the cheek. He was never going to come off. Oh, wow. Here we go. There's a nicer one. We were on the other side of that tree, and now we moved a little bit over here. We actually found a few bigger ones, but uh, that's, kind of, that's kind of the deal. Get out in the spring, find the warm water where the bugs and the bluegills are eating, and you can have yourself a Good little time.